So now we have to decide who's a candidate for this procedure. So of course we want to perform a patient evaluation. We want to make sure if we're doing this procedure that patients have symptoms. And then we're going to do some standard pre-procedure imaging and that's typically with an ultrasound, although many patients when they're coming to see the interventional radiologist have already had an ultrasound and frequently will get an MRI scan to uh, get a better detail of the fibroids to make sure patients are candidate for the procedure. And uh, here's a picture of five different examples of patients who've had MRI scans. Uh, these are all views from the side, and not that you need to know all the details here, but these are typical patients uh, who are candidates for the uterine artery embolization procedure. There's an enlarged uterus, there's multiple fibroids contained within the uterus, and these are all patients who are candidates uh, to have the procedure. And here's an example of a patient who had uh, some very severe symptoms of pain, heavy bleeding, uh, and uh, we got the MRI scan and what we see here is there's just this tiny less than a centimeter uterine fibroid and this really didn't correlate with the patient's symptoms and so we know something else is causing uh, the patient's symptoms so we would not perform a uterine artery embolization on this patient. And then sometimes we're faced with patients who have uterine fibroids that uh, as in this case are going up to the diaphragm uh, or uh, as you see here, also going up to the top of the diaphragm. And sometimes we feel that these are just too big to do this procedure on. Sometimes fibroids will grow either completely, the only fibroid here within the uterus, or down here, here's the uterus, and this fibroid just goes completely out of the uterus. And we wouldn't generally perform the procedure on, on this patient as well. And sometimes the MRIs have uh, what we call a very bizarre appearance, something that just doesn't look right, and we think that the patient should probably have uh, surgery in this case. And sometimes uh, they have a very suspicious uh, looking case, although the incidence of cancer related to the uterus is very uncommon, uh, it does happen, and uh, we use the MRI to kind of tell us whether or not we think that's a possibility, and somebody like this would also be referred to surgery. So again, uh, who's not a candidate, either patients who have symptoms with either minimal or no fibroids, or if fibroids are what we call too large, too bizarre, or suspicious, then we refer the patients uh, back to a gynecologist uh, and generally for surgery.